Hi, in this video, I'll be solving this problem. It's a rather standard problem in polar coordinates and you can find it in many, many calculus books. The question says, find the area of the region inside both curves, the region that's the overlap of these two curves. R equals five sine theta and R equals five cosine theta. Well, just like in usual Cartesian rectangular coordinates, when you ask to find the area that's between two curves, you want to at least sketch the general shape of those curves. So you can tell like what's inside, what's outside, especially when there are many things going on, then you want to be able to you know, see if there's some issue with the limits of integration, et cetera, et cetera, right? So same thing in polar coordinates. You should not do these problems without at least sketching the curves. Well, how do you sketch these curves? Um, you can do it manually slowly, or you should learn at least a few main and simple curves in polar coordinates and so that you can look at the equation and know what they are. And these two are part of the curves you should memorize. R equals A sine theta is a circle that passes through the point zero and A, in this case five, on the Y axis, on the sine axis. And then R equals five cosine theta is a circle that passes through the point zero and five on the cosine axis, which is the X axis. So if you put these together, then we're looking at this area here in between them. Let me go get a clean copy of these two circles. Right, so these are the two curves in um, this part in between here is the uh, area. Now, how do we calculate that area? Well, let's look at what happened when you were doing area under the curve in rectangular xy coordinates. If you have a curve y equals fx like this, and we need to know the area under the curve, then we would go, we would slice the x into thin little slices and on each of them, we put a little rectangle. So we have a whole bunch of little rectangles and we add them together from the first integral at A to the last, uh, from the first rectangle at A to the last rectangle at B and you have integral from A to B of fx dx. That is in rectangular coordinates. Now what happens in polar coordinates? I'm actually going to uh, erase, delete this picture for now and put it back later. What happens in polar coordinates when you have R equals F of theta and the coordinate axis is, let's say there, and you want the area from here to here. Well, before the variable is x, so you take the x and you slice into small pieces, right? Now the variable is theta. So you take the angle theta and you slice into small pieces. So it has tiny little thetas going from this theta one to this theta two. So you just have to look and see how the rays coming out so before it's vertical lines sticking out of the X axis because the variable is X and you want to have tiny little pieces of the X. So for rectangular coordinates, you subdivide the segment AB into little pieces one after another on the X axis. And that made sense. But now what happens in polar coordinates? In polar coordinates, the variable is theta and theta is defined as the angle formed at the origin. So you're going to have little d theta, that is a little change in theta. So it's a tiny little angle, tiny little angle from the center. 
and each of them would sweep out a little piece of the area, this little piece here, and that little piece is your DA. And you can think of it as little circular sectors. And for any circular sector, let's call this angle, let's say phi, then what's the area of this little sector of the circle? Well, if you think in terms of the full circle, the full circle, you can think of it as a sector of angle two pi. And the area of the circle is pi r squared. So it looks like it's this angle cut in half to get that pi. And so you think proportionally like that, then proportionally a sector of angle phi would be phi over two r squared, where r is the radius here. And for our purpose, I'll be writing it as one half r squared times phi. Uh, the reason why I do that is that now that I look at dA, if I think of this area dA as a tiny little circular segment or circular sector of radius r like this, then dA is equal to one half r squared. And then the angle of that tiny little sector is d theta. If that is dA, then we can prove. It's not self-evident, but we can prove that the total area A is integral from theta one to theta two of this one half r squared d theta. Uh, the proof of this requires more advanced math, so that's why it's never um, explained in a calculus book, but it makes sense. It seems plausible that from dA, we should be able to get to A by integrating. All right, so that's the formula. Now let's apply it to our circles. All right, here are our two circles. The region in between here is the area we're looking for. So let's visualize subdividing it into tiny little d theta. So we start from the center and we have little rays coming out from the center. So you can tell that there are two equal halves in this area. Uh, one way to do this is to just do one of them multiply by two, or you can just do one and add the other. All right, so the first angle is down here, where it goes from the center basically to itself. It's horizontal. Um, so we know it starts at zero. And if we stick to the red curve, then you go from zero to, uh, to this point. So we need to find this point. Let's call this theta naught. All right, so the bottom half would start with the first angle here and end with theta naught angle there. The area is integral from zero to theta naught of one half r squared, which is the red circle, right? So five sine theta squared d theta. And the top half, top half is here, and it's actually going along the blue. It's actually going along the blue curve, and it goes from theta naught to pi over two. So the question is where theta naught? I think you can intuitively see that it's pi over four. But let's formally solve for it. We have two curves. We have r equals five cosine theta and we have r equals five sine theta. The intersection is where the r's are equal at the same theta. Therefore, we're setting five cosine theta equals five sine theta. Uh, divide both sides by five, these are gone. Divide both sides by cosine theta, then we have one is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, which is tangent theta. 
And therefore, the answer for this, for the angle in the first quadrant is pi equals, uh, theta equals pi over four. So let me do the uh, bottom half. The bottom half is integral from zero to pi over four of one half r squared d theta. And for the bottom half, the r is the red curve that makes it sine theta. To integrate sine squared, I use the uh, double angle formula. This is equal to one minus two cosine theta over two. I'm actually gonna take the one half outside and it changes my fraction from 25 over two into 25 over four and I integrate from zero to pi over four. From zero to pi over four, sine of pi over two is one. All of that is zero. I multiply this out, I have, right, so that's the area of the bottom half. And then I can take this, multiply by two and get the whole thing. All right, so that's the answer. Um, alternatively, um, you can do the uh, top half separately and then multiply that by two. And the top half, let's take a look at the graph again. Um, the top half is the blue circle, so it's uh, five cosine theta. And this whole thing works out similarly. This is one plus cosine two theta over two. And then I can bring that two to the outside and make this over four. And that leaves me with this integral. The entire derivative is theta plus sine two theta over two. All right, this time I don't have a bunch of zeros, so I have to be careful. Pi over two plus Sine of two times pi over two is sine of pi. Sine of pi is zero. Pi over four plus sine of two times pi over four is sine of pi over two and sine of pi over two is equal to one. And so the total is equal to two times this. And so I get the same answer. We'll hope that helps. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. Thanks for watching. Bye.